Good afternoon, everybody. Carl Johnson, Mastermind Traders. It is Wednesday, March 9th, approximately 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Taking a look at the S&P 500, not a lot of change since the last time we talked about it. it the the S&P was moving up towards this 2012, hasn't broken that yet. Pulled back a little bit here yesterday on Tuesday, and today, Wednesday, it pulled up a little bit. Not a very big move. Matter of fact, if we take a closer look at it, we'll see that it just hit about the 50 percentile of the bearish candle body. If the market was really that bullish, it should have taken out at least 50 percent of that bearish body. Now, that's not always the case, but that bearish body is a decent enough sized body where I would expect a bullish day to take out at least 50%. You can tell by the wick that it tried, but it couldn't quite do it. So it settled down a little bit. Now, what does that mean? Well, not a really a whole lot, but if I was to look just at that chart, just at those two candle bodies, I would presume more bearish view, a little more of a bearish sentiment than I would a bullish. But of course, that's only speculative. It's certainly not 100% fact. With the things, uh, the way things have been going lately, who knows what's going to happen? Nonetheless, that's where we are with the S&P. If I want to take a look at the VIX, and I like to do this once a week or so. The VIX tried coming down a little bit here off these two highs. And it I thought I thought maybe it would come back down to some of these lows again, but it didn't quite make it down. So it started heading up a little bit. And interesting that uh this is increasing fear. Now it's interesting that these last, let me get rid of the congestion, that these last bodies here, four bodies, in comparison to these four bodies, that maybe it should have come down a little bit. Because if I look at the previous, if I look at these first two bodies of the four, why those were bullish bodies so we should have had a downward movement especially on that body right there but yet with that bullish body there should have been at least a little sideways movement but the fear moved up so that was the indication that it would come down on this day and it did well, now we've got just a little bit of a sideways movement on the VIX, which would be these two days, and I guess reasonably so. So the VIX is saying, hey, the fear is moving up a little bit. Well, if the fear is moving up, then perhaps the market should come down. If the fear does go up, the market will come down. But these bodies are so small that it doesn't give that much of a bearish sentiment. So we'll wait and see what happens. Now what I want to do as well, and we've been doing this, is take a look at uh, some possible trades here. So let's start with Apple. Now I'm going to let you know, and I mentioned this last time, that uh, I, I, this is about the third time I've done it, but it will be the last time. Now, what I'm going to do for the Trade Alert subscribers is I'm going to start making this a, a constant thing on a monthly basis. And this, will, this video now will be posted on the Trade Alert page. So for those of you that are Trade Alert subscribers, I'm going to try to get about 10 to 20 of these trades out per month. 10 to 20. Now that's up and besides the regular trade alerts. So 
the trade alerts are something that we actually uh, place in our account, and these uh, little individual candidates, we don't trade. We may here and there, but there's so many of them that I'm not going to trade them all. I'm trying to give a lot of suggestions, and you can pick and choose what fits your your trading style, your level of aggression, your level of conservativeness. Yet at that same time, I'm not telling you to do these trades. I'm not even advising you. But I would follow them for sake of education. All right, so Apple. Uh, Apple, Apple broke out, and Apple got, had a 100% test. Had a 100% test. So if Apple does break above the high tomorrow, and if it continues above this 101.60, then that would be a bullish play. What could we do bullishly? I'd buy a call. Could we place a bull put spread underneath these levels? We sure could. So that's where a bull put spread would go. Now, I like the idea of the call better on Apple simply because of the pricing of the of the uh, contracts. And I would do one of two things. We want tomorrow's Thursday. I would probably take this Friday's expiration of the 11th. This Friday's expiration. And you might be thinking, oh, wait a minute here. I thought we were told you got to go at least two weeks out. Yeah, well, uh, at the beginning levels of education, yes. Now, if I jumped into this tomorrow, Thursday morning, and I took the 11th expiration, I more than likely will not hold over Thursday into Friday. I more than likely would not do that. I would try to get out when I am happy with the profit on Thursday, or at least at the end of Thursday. Now, why I would get in tomorrow is because tomorrow, Thursday, we've only got two days left until expiration, Friday, and that means that these options are going to be very cheap because there's not going to be much time value in those options. But what I'm not going to do, more than likely, is hold overnight on Thursday. Because from the close of Thursday to the open on Friday, there will be 17 and a half hours of time decay. And then I've only got six and a half hours left on Friday until the close on Friday. So I've got 17 and a half hours from the close of Thursday to the open of Friday and only 24 hours left from the close of Thursday to the close of Friday. So that means a lot of time has got to decay away. Now the only way I would hold in overnight from Thursday to Friday morning is if I had maybe only 10 cents of time left in my option. And if I felt that it would continue to go up, and I'd have to be willing to get rid of or lose my time value holding from Thursday close to Friday open. And all I'd have to do is gain 10 cents of intrinsic value on a call to make up for the loss of 10 cents of time. You might have to think that through. All right, now could a person hold or take a position with the following Friday's expiration and hold on to this trade to see if it makes it all the way up here? Sure could. Sure could. So either or. Now, again, I like the idea of the call because I'll probably only have about three cents between the bid by ask and uh, a very cheap option if I choose this Friday's expiration. So these are the types of things that we do in in our uh, intraday trading. All right, so let me get, uh, let me go to the next one here. And you know, before I move to the next one, I forgot to talk about the stop. I would probably throw a stop in here right underneath, right underneath, maybe, oh, right underneath the support level. I'd probably keep it pretty tight. Now that's about a dollar's move. So with a tight stop like that, what I would want that if I did get into the trade, now think about this, if I get into the trade because it pushes up 
and I've only got a three cent spread, the stock has only got to move three cents to clear that spread. Don't forget, we're always in the hole, the amount of the spread, as soon as we take the position on. So what if the stock only went up 10 cents and then started to turn down? I could jump out of the trade right away and make seven cents. I have to give the three cents back. Right? So I really don't want it to go down and take out a stop at a whole dollar down. I'd prefer not to do that. But uh, if the market is bullish tomorrow, so the only time I'm going to take this on, that it not only has to take out the 101.60, but I have to have positive futures in the morning. If I do not have positive futures in the morning, I'm not going to do the trade. So it has to, uh, the trade would only be taken if this happens. By the call, if. I always got to think of that word, if. All right, so... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next trade. I was looking at Facebook. Facebook is pretty has pretty much the same um, thing going on here, where I've got the strong angle of attack. So I've got the strong angle. So we got to close above this magenta line here, this trend line. So if Facebook would trade up above that 107, this is another thing I would go ahead and do the same with. Uh, Facebook as I did with Apple. Try to, bu try to buy this Friday's call option, or again, could go into the following week and hopes that it surpasses this level. And I think this 109.95 resistance level uh, could be a weak support level, or excuse me, resistance level, but it is there and it, uh, it cannot be ignored. So that's about a dollar or two dollars and thirty cents up. And again, Facebook options. We're talking in the low one dollar range, a dollar ten, dollar twenty. It could cost tomorrow to take on uh, to take on a call option, and if I would follow, especially when we get into uh, close to expiration. We've got to make sure we got a good delta, seventy or plus, seventy two, seventy four delta. Now we could do a bull push spread, but the bull push spread would have to be placed under here. But you could not do it for this Friday. There would not be enough money. I don't think I like that at this point. But I do like buying, taking on the call if it surpasses the 107.60. And again, would have to have positive futures. Otherwise, no go. Now, if I did take this on, my stop would be right underneath the open right underneath that open and let's say about I uh, got to give it a little wiggle room so I'd place it right there and that's about a dollar twenty down All right so that's what I would do with that all right now don't forget that's two bullish trades so I am making a list of what we have bearishly and what we have bullishly so far this is bullish and another, another one I looked at was McDonald's. So if McDonald's breaks uh, half of that wick around 119.90, and my thinking on that is uh, we're, we're kind of breaking above these sideways moving averages, and the moving averages are just starting to take a little bit of an angle. Right now these moving averages, they don't mean a darn thing because they're going sideways. But what we have here is a little bit of a box. Okay, a little bit of a box going on there. And actually, I guess that goes back eh, right about here. And we're just breaking outside of that box. And we actually have a uh, resistance level up here, about four bucks up, three, four bucks up. So that's we have to always be aware of our of our uh, resistance. Now, again, it would ha we'd have I wouldn't do. I don't believe I would go with this Friday's expiration unless you're able to sit in front of your computer and do some intraday trading. On this one, I would definitely go way out to next week following the uh, the option rules. Now, if this trade was taken on, this might be a little bit rougher simply because to make this a safe trade, it would be best to have our stop inside inside of that box. 
being that we're playing it because it broke outside of the box. And that happens, and that's right below the low of that same candlestick. So that's about a dollar sixty. You'd have to be willing to place that risk. A dollar sixty at a risk. Now don't forget um, that dollar sixty depends upon your delta. If you take on a seventy delta, you'd be losing about seventy percent of. If you took a seventy delta, you'd be losing about seventy percent of that dollar sixty. So um, we could we could be a little bit more conservative and tuck that tuck that uh, right underneath the open of the body. I don't know if I like that. Uh, it all depends on a person's account size and your tolerance for risk. Otherwise, I'd be tucking it right in there, right around uh, 1830. So that's where I personally would place it. All right, so that's McDonald's. I took a look at Caterpillar. And Caterpillar's got a couple different things going on. We could, because we had a breakout, Caterpillar took took it a little bit of a, uh, a rise above these levels over here. Now, if I that would probably be equal to this close. So let's let's take a look and see if how accurate I am with that assessment here. Uh, I would want to take the top of these levels right here. Or, excuse me, go to the high. There we go. And it closed underneath that. So it did not, however, and what's important here is it tried to come underneath this support level. It tried, but couldn't do it. It pulled back up and closed above it. So that tells me that we could be a little bullish. So if it surpasses tomorrow, if it surpasses today's open of 7230, uh, then I would uh, go ahead and take a position. Now it's about two dollars and sixty cents to move to the upside. The stop would have to go. I don't want to go way down here. That's too darn low. But these two little small wicks, that's where about I would set my stop. Now I like kind of going over this for you guys because this is hopefully helping you think through how to evaluate where to take your entry points and where to perhaps uh, set your stops. I'm going to make this 45. I want to give it a little wiggle room. Okay, now, I didn't check to see if there's any money, but it is possible because we are tucked in so close to the 72 that we could actually do yeah, maybe a 70 put and a 67 50 put. In other words, sell buy for this Friday. I doubt if there would be enough money, but if it's moving up quickly and a person could get in and if there's more than 20 cents, then that's a possible trade for this Friday. Because you only have to be concerned more about Thursday because of the time decay from Thursday's close until Friday's open. So that's a possibility, but I don't think there would be any money here. I, I don't think so, and I didn't take the time to look. So I like the idea of the call, and on this I would probably do not this Friday's call, but next Friday's call. And uh, here at the inner or at the Titanium in Chicago, we're going to show you how to take better positions. For those of you that are going to come, we're going to show you how to take much better positions and to protect and to hedge uh, at a much better uh, risk. Uh, risk situation. In other words, to manage with a lot less risk, with more return on your on your buck, and pay less for it as well. But that gets way too involved to uh, even discuss here. But those of you that will be at Titanium in Chicago in April, uh, this is going to be quite interesting. You're going to see how to uh, how to handle these types of trades at a, a much better, more professionally. So those of you that are not coming. You might want to consider that. Okay, right to support at mastermindtraders.com. All right, now here's something we could do too with with uh, Caterpillar. This is on my kind of I don't knowish list. So if it does not trade up tomorrow, if it trades down, 
I'd want to close underneath this support. So support then would become resistance. Then I would wait into maybe next week. I would never take a Friday and hold uh, a long position over the weekend. But I would, uh, I would wait for a close and then maybe Monday or so take a position if it goes down below that level. So that's just a thought. All right, and uh, so we went over three or four bullish trades here, Apple, Facebook, McDonald's, Caterpillar. What about if the market's bearish tomorrow? Well, if the market's bearish tomorrow, I'm not going to do any of the trades we just discussed. I need to look at some uh, bearish possibilities. One of them would be Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs has some pressure to the downside. And if Goldman Sachs broke that 149.20, that would be a put entry. And what I would do is uh, buy the put there. Now the safest place, and this this is a little on the risky side, is to put my stop way up here. But boy, that is that is really up there. Okay, so you really have to have a two dollar or three dollar and thirty cent risk tolerance. That's a bit high. Uh, to be a little bit more conservative, a person could place the stop right around halfway through that body, uh, right around maybe uh, say one sixty or one fifty one. Excuse me, one fifty one. So the stop could go there at that 151. Problem is at that level, it would be very easy for the stock to go up and smack, smack the 151, take you out of the trade, only to head down again. So the lesson in this is to be safe. I mean, you got to give a stock some wiggle room. And if you, if this is too much. Uh, too much risk or too much to lose, then this is the trade you don't do. But it's a good lesson to practice. You take on the smaller trades like the Apples and the Facebooks. All right, so uh, Goldman Sachs would go on my bearish list. Another possibility is uh, AIG. And taken a bearish position below 5140 and my stop would have to go here's the safest place for it but that's that's a little risky as well and that would be about 70 cents it's not I shouldn't say it's risky it's a safe place to, to put it but it uh, it gives the most wiggle room now this is a good place to to place it, but this is not where I'd recommend to place it. If I was going to recommend any place to place a stop, it would actually be right above that 10 moving average. That makes it a lot tighter. If I were playing it, this is where I'd set it. But this right here, right around 52.10, and eh, maybe even 52.05. So 52.05 is where I'd place a stop, and I'm just going to uh, set that up there as well. Two different stops. All right, so um, yeah, that'd be a good place. E either one of them. The 52.75, of course, gives more wiggle room for the stock to move. And the interesting thing about uh, AIG, uh, AIG is just one of those wicked stocks. I, I don't. I don't like the idea of all these wicks. See all these wicks? These wicks can just go up and smack out your stop and then head down right off the bat. So this is a, a stock that you got to be very cautious with. Always look to the left. Try to try to look at the behavior of the stock historically. All right. So what we have so far is let me grab a different colored pen. We've got some bearish. Trades and bullish trades. Arrow down is my bearish trades, of course. We've got Apple. We've got Facebook. We've got McDonald's. 
and Caterpillar, and then Goldman Sachs here in the Bears Trades and AIG. All right, so what happens if tomorrow the markets are bullish? If the markets are bullish tomorrow, what do we do? Well, we don't even consider those. Now, the thing about Goldman Sachs, however, Goldman Sachs is a financial. Goldman Sachs does what Goldman Sachs wants to do. So if you were able to sit in front of your computer and the market was going up, Goldman Sachs will do what Goldman Sachs wants to do. It could still go down. So being a financial and a little bit on the radical side, sometimes Goldman can be, uh, you could still trade it down in an up market. If the markets are are bearish, I'm not going to do those. I will do those. Okay? Now, something here as well. If the market is bullish, I will trade bullish markets and an aggressively bearish market. Because if the stock goes down in a bullish market, it's got probably a darn good reason why it's going down. If the markets are bearish, I will trade the bearish markets, but I will not trade it bullishly. Okay, so you kind of see the difference here? In a bullish market, I will trade either direction. I prefer, however, to trade bullishly. But if there's a real good candidate like Goldman Sachs, then I would trade bearishly because it's got a good reason why it's going down. But in a bearish market over here, I will not trade bullishly. Okay, Not usually, not, not to hang in for a while. All right, so there's a lot of extra thought there. Now, uh, again, this is going to be the last time I go through all these candidates. I suggest if you do not already subscribe to the trailers to go ahead and subscribe to the trailers. And from this point on, I'm going to be running minimum of 10 to 20 of these a month. And, you know, it's not hard to get that many. Uh, right now, we just got done doing uh, six trades. And if I can do six trades every few days, uh, we'll probably end up with closer to 20 uh, than we would 10. So from now on, uh, these trade videos will be on the Trade Alert Facebook page. And, of course, you would have to be a subscriber to the traders to view these. Now, I will still continue to do market insights and evaluate the market, but not giving an assessment of some of these trades. And just kind of a heads up, a lot of people have been asking about intraday trading. This is about the last opportunity you might have to do that if you want to do it, simply because as of May 5th, May 17th, I'm taking a break. So you have to take the course right. You can always take the course, but I'm not going to be doing live classes on a consistent basis. Here's what we did in intraday trades today about $4,100, and for the whole month of March so far, I think we're up about almost $11,000. So that's what we're doing in intraday trading. You guys, we'll see you next time around. Okay, long video today, I know. All right, don't want to eat up too much of your time. Everybody take care.